I noticed in that previous video that when we deleted our octaves from the parameter set here, um, a couple of the other parameters actually shot out to the right hand side of the line. And I think you'll notice me hitting delete a couple of times, but plowing on nonetheless. So what I've done is I've actually got those parameters, uh, stereo, volume and loops. I've pulled them into the line now and we can quickly talk about them now. So stereo, <clears throat> excuse me, is true false or minus one. So minus one just means automatic or true or false. And that basically means, do you want your signal to be presented stereo? both channels or do you want them to be forced monorally uh, so minus one is automatic <clears throat> volume now this takes a value between zero and one zero being zero percent so the amplitude is zero one being maximum and so um or a hundred percent we're not going to go into calibration of your sound output device here if you're doing anything like um, mast thresholds or audiometric thresholds or anything that requires precise amplitudes, then you will need to use something like a piston phone or a BNK sound calibrator to calibrate your sound output device. We're not going to go through that here. But we can set the volume and we're going to go through that in this video. Uh, loops. Now, do you want your sound stimulus to play over and over and over and over and over or do you want it to just play once for the duration? So we can set that here using the uh, loops. So number of loops to play. Minus one is forever. Zero is a single repeat. So again, documentation's there and you can read through what the documentation means. So <clears throat> what we can do now is look at changing the volume of or the amplitude of our sound stimulus. So we can go sound.setVolume and we'll set it to say 0 0.1. Okay, so we've initialized it to one, we'll set it to 0 0.1. And what we'll do is we'll just, just to prove that, they're, that they are different, we'll comment that set volume line out. So it's actually gonna, when we call the function, sorry, when we're gonna call the sound file, it will play at one. And so I'll try and keep the headphones at the same distance away. You'll also notice that I'm waiting for about one and a half seconds afterwards just to see whether or not we can stop the production of those offset um, distortions. So let's run this. I'll try and hold the headphones about that distance away. We'll hit enter. Okay, so there we go. I'll save that. That was quite soft, wasn't it? Let's see if it's still playing, because I didn't quite hear it. Yeah, it's very soft now. We'll set that up to point, say, five. Okay. So here, we can use sound or your sound file dot set volume give that a parameter between zero and one, a number between zero and one, and that will change the amplitude of your sound output. And then you will calibrate that accordingly. So that's how we can set the parameters or change the parameters. What else can we do? Well, we've got here a very long way of accessing the sound, uh, the sound backend. What we'll do is we'll just comment that out. And we will do a very similar thing, so sound equals sound, and we can basically start calling things now just using sound.sound. .sound. So sound, so SMD, sound.sound. .sound. So let's see, can we, let's try and call up that one second demo noise. So what can we do? Well, let's go, uh, we want to call please, one second demo noise dot wave. Let's just make sure that that's in the same file folder as where we are now. So one second demo noise dot wave. Yep, that's there, that's good. What else do I need to do? Let's give it a sample rate. And we know that we sample this at 48,000 Hertz. And let's force this into a stereo file. We won't set the volume. We know that we can set the volume. Uh, sound.play and then core.wait.
There we go. We have now figured out a way. We'll play that again. Okay, we have now figured out a way of calling in the WAV file that we created elsewhere. So remember, um, before we said, oh, what if a colleague gave you one of her sound files or if you wanted to create something using um, Audacity or some other program, so Wave Steinberg Wave Lab or Cubase Audio or something like that, you could do that without any problems. So here we have gone from using, you know, quite a long handed way of saying, hey, I want to use a uh, sound device, the back end, to basically just saying sound dot sound and basically letting sound choose which of those uh, back ends it wants to use. In this video, we also showed that you could do sound dot set volume and then this will take any value between zero and one and change the amplitude accordingly. Remember, we weren't able to do that so easily in our previous video files. Sorry, in our previous, yeah, in the previous video files where we used Pi Audio. So um, here we can actually access the volume parameter itself and we could change things. And we could change things precisely once you calibrate your sound output device. So we'll stop talking here. We'll leave this video here. This is how we basically play sounds using PsychoPi itself. We'll leave this video and um, I'll see you in the next video. Best of luck.